Okay, this is day one of Avid Nonlinear Video Editing. I'll be posting this on YouTube. All right, so we're gonna just jump right in. This is uh, when you start when you start the Avid screen. This is the project window that is going to first come up. Every single uh, project that's been done this trimester is saved in this little bin right here. And um, what, how the way that you save a new project is click on the new project button, type in the name of your project name of your project, okay, and then you hit OK. And it's going to load into here. And for today's purposes, we have one that's called Continuity Video 1, Section 3. Uh, we are only, only select Shared. Um, we don't select Private, and we don't, ex don't select External. So if you want to take a shot of this screen, you could do that. I'll keep it up here for no another 10 more seconds. So we want to select shared, and then we want to select the project that we are going to work on. All right, so down over here, we have this selected in blue. We're going to hit OK. It's going to load in the project, all the files that we have associated with this project. And right now we've got, um, I'll just, I'm going to go through these windows here. This is called your project window, right here. This is called your source window, record window, and timeline. So project window, source window, record window, and timeline. Uh, I've already made a bin. I brought in all the clips that we recorded yesterday. Um, there's, a, there's a bin called Real Bin. I'm going to double click on this black box right here. It's a bin. We're going to double click on that. And then all of the video files that we recorded yesterday are down here in this super bin. It's called a super bin. So here's, these are video clips, these little uh, icons here. If you double click it, you're going to see all the video clips that we recorded yesterday. Question? How do you what? Yep, we're getting there. Yep. Okay, so this is your source window, record window, and timeline. This is called your super bin. Sup not Superman, but super bin. And this is. Yep. Right. If I wanted to bring in clip number O zero zero zero. Six seven. If I wanted to bring this one in, I can click all day on those numbers, and it's not going to load. You have to, have to, have to, Keon. You have to click on this little film clip, and then it will load in there. Same thing with number seventy. Got to click on the film strip. If I click on the number, nothing's going to happen. I think everybody understands that now. Another nice feature about this is uh, when you double click the film strip, um, it shows up what that clip is. Okay, You can also click on 00059 and you can rename it. I'm going to name this one Junk just because I'm not going to use it. I put the new name in, hit enter, and it saves it. I can go back and I, oh man, I need that stuff. Shot one. Okay. This is one of the biggest um, steps that high school students miss when they bring in their footage and then they don't name it. They just keep it as 00066. Well, where's that one shot of that one thing that we need? I don't know. Let's, let's waste time and click on all of these all over again. So instead of, instead of doing that, just rename each one, okay? So it doesn't take that long. If we double click this, it says scene one, take one. So we type in scene one, take, take one. Scene one, take one. This one is scene two, take one. Scene two, take one, take one. It'll save you a tremendous amount of time being organized like that. Scene one, take one. 
This one's scene three, take one. Scene three, take one. Bless you. Okay, so you guys understand the gist of it. I'm not going to name all those, but if I if I really wanted to get specific, I could uh, double click on zero 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 six seven and play this through, and I could say I could type in inside radio station actors walk in. So you could go as a specific as that. Uh, INT interior two actors walk in. Okay? So you never you'll never guess what that one is because it's already labeled for you. This one, 00068. Follow shot with camera. You go H period H period follow actors in room. What does HH stand for? Handheld, follow actors in room. Okay? So if you have every single one of your B roll shots labeled as far as what it is, you're going to stay pretty organized in this super bin. Super bin. Super bin. Okay? Questions so far that I can answer? When did you take all these? Yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys left. I wrote these guys passes to go to the next class. Yep, 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 yep. Good question. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Okay. All right. So this is our junk shot. We don't need that one. Uh, all right. Well, let's just go right in through this. Uh, when we double click it, it goes into what's this window called? Source, Source window. And we're going to hit play. I'll make sure my speaker's on here. And roll nine, scene one, take one. In five, four, three. All right, so spacebar will stop the footage. Spacebar will also start it. Okay, um, on the on the keyboard itself, there's four arrows up, down, and left and right. If I hit the arrow going to the left, how many frames are in a second? Thirty. Thirty frames in a second. Thirty frames in a second. So you can see, going frame by frame, that. It takes them forever to get to the classroom. Okay? So 30 frames back, get them out of the shot. I don't want to see, oh, there's a hand, there's an arm. I don't want to see the arm. So I'm going to go frame back. One, two, I just went two frames back. One, two, two frames forward. I see a hand. I don't want to see the hand. Two frames back. Okay? I do that with the, the right and the left arrow on the keyboard. You can also do that same thing up here. Step backwards one frame. Step forwards one frame. There's my hand. I don't want to see the hand. So step backwards one frame. One, two, three. Okay. This is where I want this, this shot to start, right? Because I don't want to see the hand yet. So going through some of these, this will rewind the, rewind the playhead. This little blue um, eye, we can call it a playhead. This uh, will re rewind it all the way back to the beginning. This will fast forward it to the end. This will bring it back to the beginning. Um, this will go backwards one frame. How many frames are in a second? Very good. All right, so we're going to go forward here, get the shot lined up, get that hand. Where's the hand? There's the hand. And we're going to step backwards, go frame by frame, until the frame the shot is out. All right, so this is where we want the shot to start, correct? Mark in this little this little uh, icon right here. If you want to take a shot with your iPad, you can do that. When you hover over the top of a tool or over the top of a button, it will tell you what what the name of the tool is. In this case, it's called Mark in. And when you push a Mark in, you're telling the computer on that clip. That's where I want the clip to start. Okay? Not 
not here, not where I can see the arm. I don't want the arm to be seen until the movie starts. So I'm going to hit mark in. When you hit mark in, it puts these little teeth on the left side telling you that you've just marked that shot in. That's the beginning of that shot. Mark in. Tells the, tells the shot where you want it to start. Questions on that? Mark in. Tells the shot where it should start. David, any questions? David Moss? Yeah. Question? Oh, no. Okay, alright. Okay, we're going to hit play. Do I want the pulse roll on there? No. As soon as I go in that room, that's where I want to cut. So I'm going to just leave some lead space right there. Okay. So I'm just going to leave just a, a few seconds after that. Okay. So this is where I want the end. I don't want to hear my voice going five, four, three, because you don't hear that in movies. I just went to Noah on Saturday, and I never heard the director saying, in five, four, three, okay, roll the water. Let's build, let's, let's put water in the ship. I didn't hear any of that. For you guys, when you're editing your stuff out, you're never going to include your pre-roll or your post-roll. Okay? So we want to tell, tell this shot, end it. That's the end. That's where we stop it. So over the top of this one, this is called mark out. And when I push that button, it puts these little teeth on the end of that shot. It also puts this little mark out icon. And now we have a mark in. We don't see the light. We don't see the arm. That's out. And we also don't hear me yelling five, four, three. Okay. So this is one shot right here. This is one shot. That's the beginning. That's the end. What don't you understand about that? Everybody's good. All right, now it's time to put, put that into our timeline, which is where we're going to build our movie. Okay, so this, is my, this might be where it gets a little confusing. So I'm going to do this a couple times. I'm going to show you a couple different ways. It will make sense. There's two ways to get this shot, this number one, this first shot of our movie, down into our timeline to start building our movie. The first way is called splice in. When we push that button, it brings it down into your timeline. Okay? So this shot right here, the beginning of it and the end of it, is now down in our timeline. If we play it back, it's all right there. All the way to when they go into the room. And we also don't hear my voice going. The reason why that pulse roll is not there is because we pushed mark out right there which matches right there. Does that make sense to everybody? This extra footage right here where I'm where I'm counting. Five, four. That stuff is not there because that happens after the mark out. Does everybody understand that? When we're filming, do you want us to actually say the five, four, three, two, one? Um sometimes you can, sometimes it it I sometimes I will and sometimes I won't. It's kind of up to you. I mean, if, if your post roll is really important to you and you're going to use that sound, then I probably wouldn't. But if you're recording your music video and you're going to put your song over the top of your whole entire soundtrack, then it really doesn't matter. Yep. Okay? The second way, I'm going to go up to Edit, Undo, Splice In. Okay, now we're back to where we started. The second way to get this footage down to your timeline is called overwrite. So I'm going to push overwrite. It does it the, the same way. There's a, there's a couple different uh, differences between splice in and overwrite. Um, overwrite puts it down the same way. It's there. It ends the same way. But the difference between these two buttons here, um, I'll show you the difference here once we start laying down some, some other edits. But if you can understand what we just did, 
found the mark in, found the mark out, we brought it down to our timeline. There's two ways to do it, splice in, overwrite. I just want you to understand that first. So if there's any question about marking it in or marking it out, ask those right now. No question? Okay. All right, let me give you a bird's eye view here of what the timeline could look like. When you have, when you have a whole entire movie built, <coughs> Noah was like what, two and a half hours, I think it was. Two hours and 20 minutes. So I'm just, I'm putting this shot in many, 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 many times. So right now my movie is up to 35 minutes, 40 minutes. If you look down here in this timeline right here, 40, 40 minutes. Now my movie is 50 minutes, 5.0. Now it's a, an hour-long movie of that same scene. So you could watch this scene over and over and over and over and over and over again for one hour, and like it wouldn't change. Okay. So you could also make a, a two-hour movie. Okay. You just keep adding in these shots. This I don't know. I can't remember what our longest movie ever in this class was. Now our movie is an hour and ten minutes. Hour and fifteen minutes. Okay, so you can see, you can see the impact. If you want, it, if you want to do a movie that's an hour long, this computer program can do it. Avid can do it. So yes. No, nobody has ever made a, an hour-long movie in video production at Farmington High School. The longest that we've ever gotten for a movie was, yeah, I think it was pretty close to 40 minutes. It's, it's very difficult to write a long movie, especially comedy. Okay, so just I want you to be aware that you can make a long movie. This computer program can do it. We're, te we're giving you the skills on how to film it and how to edit it. So. Now, I, I want to get rid of all this stuff, and I'm going to show you how to do that because this, this clip, it's great and everything, but we don't need that many takes of it. Um, every time that you put this shot in, it puts it in, in a box, puts it in a scene. Scene one, take one. That's what, the reason why it's called scene one, take one is because that's what we named it, scene one, take one. Okay. So that scene happens over and over and over again. Do you guys know that you can also do reverse motion on this? What? So if I hit the J key, yeah. the J key, this will, this will go backwards in time. And if I hit the J key twice, it goes even faster. We've done, we've done, uh, just to view it, though. yeah, just to view it. <laughs> we've done some, we've done some analysis on like running, how people run, like when you go slow motion. Um, we, recorded a girl, was that a couple of years ago, Cora? She wanted to see how she ran because she, what was, what was the situation with her? Some sort of an injury, she had some sort of a hip injury or... Yeah, she wanted to analyze how her foot landed on concrete. So Mr. Mathis filmed her and then we slowed it down and we were able to go frame by frame and see how her foot landed. So I don't know if it was any benefit to her, but... All right, but we want to get rid of all these shots here, so I'm going to show you the way to do that. We're going to go down to our scale bar here. I think you maybe saw how I did this before. This little box down here is right next to Untitled. This is called our scale bar. And if I click and I drag this over like this, it's going to zoom in to wherever my, my playhead is, this little blue line, this playhead. If I wanted to zoom in on 45 minutes, I could put my 45 minutes right there, that playhead right there, and then zoom in on that spot, and then it zooms in to wherever my playhead is. It puts it right in the middle. Okay. Actually, yeah. If you look right up here, everybody see where my mouse is? Right up here, it says zero one zero 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 zero. Avid starts their time their time code out at zero one. So it's, even though it's starting out at, right at the beginning, if I go forward in time, here, I'll give you one minute. There. There's one minute right there. 
But yeah, that's one minute in time. So you just have to deduct an hour. Okay, you can go into the you can go into the settings and say I want my starting time code to be zero 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 zero. But you have to go into the settings and do that, and it's it's just I don't know, it's kind of a waste of time. So just know that you probably will never get to an hour. Some of you might, but I don't know. It takes a long time, a lot of practicing, and a lot of a lot of hard work and a lot of filming to get to an hour, and I don't see anybody getting that that much of a film done this year. But I could be wrong. You never know. All right, so I'm going to scale in, and I'm going to I'm going to get rid of everything else after that point. Zoom in. I want to show you a frame here. This solid blue line, and then this dotted blue line. This is one frame of video right here. One frame. This is also one frame. This is one frame. And this is one frame. This little line right here, and then it says scene one, take one. This is where the next scene starts. Okay. So if I want to delete this clip and everything else after that, I just have to go to, I have to put my cursor right on top of that, and I'm going to hit mark in. Now, this side, this side is called the, the source window. This side is called the record window. Everything that we do down on the timeline coincides with what we do up here. Okay? So as, if I'm scrubbing through up here, that's what we call it. It's called scrubbing. Uh, if I push down on my mouse and I'm going through this shot, pushing down on my mouse right now and I'm going back and forth, that's called scrubbing. S C R U B B I N G. Scrubbing. B B. So what I do down here happens up here. So the timeline and the record window coincide with one another. They're related to each other. Make sense? Yeah. So if I let me zoom out here once on my scale bar. If I move my playhead up here, it's also going to move it down here. If I move it to the end, it's going to move it to the end. If I move it to the beginning, it's going to move it to the beginning. There's a whole other uh, set of tools for the record side, for the record window. We have our rewind. We have our fast forward. It brought it to the end. We have our, we have our frame back and forth, backwards forwards we have our mark in we have our mark or we have our play button that will play the footage we have our mark out and this one is called mark clip and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit um, that's all you need to know there's there's a few other ones I'll go over, over again but this window has its own set of tools and this one has its own set of tools source and record questions on that Okay, I'm going to go back to the beginning. I can either do it up here or I can do it down here. You also have to select up on top of, if you guys see this white bar right here, it's a grayish white. You have to click up on the numbers. So if I wanted to go to 15, here's 15, the time code 15. You can't click down here. You can't click up here. The only way to get time code 15 is by hitting up on the numbers. Hitting up on the numbers, hitting up on the numbers, hitting up on the numbers. You cannot hit on the gray. Cannot hit on the gray. Can't hit down here. You have to hit on the numbers. Okay? When you the first time you when you guys get on the Avid, you're gonna say, Mr. Tauchi, I can't move to time code uh, one hour. It doesn't go. I'm hitting here. You gotta click up on the numbers. Always on the numbers. Okay? All right, so I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to pull out all this extra footage that I do not need. This is my scale bar. I'm going to enlarge that track. And I'm going to I'm going to lift this shot out. And I'm, I'm going to show you a quick way and a long way to do this. This little arrow down here, if I want to, I'm trying to find the beginning of this shot. So I'm pushing down on the scroll bar button here, trying to find the beginning of this shot. 
Here's my break in that scene. If I put my cursor right there and I push mark in. It's going to put a mark in down here also. Okay? So, not to confuse you, but the source window has its own controls for the raw footage, you know, getting rid of the pre roll and the post roll. And then you've got your record window that has its own set of controls to set your mark in and your mark out and play. And then you have your timeline down here that has mark in, mark out, mark clip, and a whole bunch of other things that we'll, t we'll talk to you about. So there are so many buttons and so many options that you ha kind of have to keep everything straight. And it's, this is a really, really advanced program and that's why we're spending um, some time with it and we're spending uh, uh, showing you how to showing you where stuff is located so we have our mark in and right now our goal right now is to is to get rid of all these shots here we made we made an hour and 30 minutes of this one shot just because I wanted to show you how far you could go with this sequence I'm going to enlarge this again Okay, you saw that some of this, some of the sequence was blue, right? The reason why it was blue is because there was a mark out. Anything highlighted in blue, you can you can copy, you can cut, you can erase it, you can get rid of it. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to get rid of all of this stuff. And using these tools up here, what we're going to do, we already set our mark in. Okay which is right up here. That's where we want it to start. And we want to take out everything after that point all the way to the end. So I'm going to bring my cursor all the way to the end. And what did I say about this record window and the timeline? Do you guys, anybody, does anybody remember that? They're the same. They coincide with one another. They're related to each other. Okay. So what I do up here happens down here. So I go to the end of the sequence. Watch what I do here. I could hit mark out right here, but watch. The whole entire sequence is blue. This window is related to your timeline. I could have hit this one also. Here, let me undo that. Okay, I just took out the out. Now let me push it down here. That also does the same thing. It highlights that whole entire region to erase it, I can copy it, I can cut it, whatever I want to do. Okay? Any questions on that? These two windows are related to each other. They coincide with one another. Did anybody see that quick blip? There's a little blip. Okay, that that is Avid saving the timeline every 10 minutes for you. Okay? Every 10 minutes it saves it. And when you exit out of Avid, it saves it. Let me, let me show you how to just save it on its own. If I go up to File, and I go to Save All Bins. Saving All Bins will save your whole entire sequence. Do you notice that it's grayed out right now? You see how Close is black, but Save All Bins is grayed out? Okay, if you just saw that quick little blip, Ava just saved it for you. So I have made no changes since that happened. So if I want to save it again, Avid's going to say, uh, just saved it for you. You don't need to save it again. Okay? If I were to make a change, let's say I take out a middle section, mark in, mark out. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this section out. I'm going to extract it. If you watch what happens when I hit, hit extract, You guys okay? Yeah. We're going to extract. I just took out a little section. Now watch. If I go up to File, look what's blacked out. What do I have the option to save? All bins. Save all bins. all bins. So when I save all bins, watch what happens. Save all bins. You see that little, that little bar go across to the right? Now it's saved again. Go up to File. Now it's grayed out again. Now it's been saved up to this point. Now if I did that again, 
I would have the option to save it. So every 10 minutes, you can count on Avid saving it for you. Okay, we're going to erase this big, long section here. We're going to zoom in to this little section, find that break in the scene. We're going to put our cursor or our frame look right there. We're going to hit mark in and we're going to zoom out. We're going to click up on the numbers, clicking up the numbers, clicking up on the numbers. We're going to go all the way to the end. I can either do it here or I can do it here. Makes no difference. I can either hit mark out here or I can hit mark out here because the timeline and the record window are the same. the same. They coincide with one another. Let me make one little mark. Okay, mark in, mark out. <clears throat> Let me show you the difference between extract and lift. Extract is a yellow button right here down on your timeline. When you want to extract footage, extracting, uh, think of it as basically cutting it out, cutting everything out, including the time. How much time do we have down here? We have an hour and 30 minutes. We extract will also get rid of time. It erases time from your timeline. So if I hit extract, you're going to see all of these clips go away, gone. There's only one clip left. To undo, you can go Control Z, which I just did. Now all those clips are back. Now let me show you what Lift does. Lift, L-I-F-T. The Lift tool is a red arrow that's pointing up. And if I wanted to create a, an hour and 30 minute long break of black, just have black in, a, in the screen, I could hit lift, and now it's just this black screen for an hour and 30 minutes. So lift will basically lift it out, creating a gap. You can do that with audio, and you can do it with video. Extract will actually take all that time out. Any questions so far? Extract will take out time, delete time. Lift will keep the time in there, but it will lift out your audio or your video. Let's say I wanted to keep just the video, but I was going to replace the audio with something. Over here are two handles. There's a handle for audio one and a handle for audio two. I just deselected audio one and audio two. Okay, notice that audio one and audio two are no longer blue. Let's take let's uh, turn off the video. This says video one. If I deselect that, this is no longer blue. If I hit lift, what's gonna happen with the audio? It's gonna disappear because I'm gonna lift it out. What will happen if I hit extract? Gonna get, it's going to get deleted. Will that delete the audio track? No. No. Watch. Extract. I just took out all of. I just took out all of the audio. Left the video. Control Z will undo it. If I hit lift on this audio, it's going to, to get rid of it. Now all the audio is gone. This, the video is still there. The reason the video is still there is because we deselected this part. Go up to edit, undo. Everything is back. If I wanted to take out a section in the middle of my movie, let's say I want it to start right there, and I want it to end, get you guys in the room, mark in, mark out, and I want to create a, uh, a blank space right in the middle of my movie. If I select video one, A1, and A2, and put mark in and mark out right there, highlighting that little clip. If I hit extract, it's going to combine this section with this, this section, watch. When I hit extract, 
this little blue bar is going to go away and these two clips are going to come together. Okay, they just came back together. Control Z undoes. Now if I hit the red lift button, lift just lifts the footage out. Lift takes out the audio and the video. So now what we have here, the video stops, goes to black, and then it comes back in. Yes. Is there any dead air in video? Yes. This is dead air right here. Oh. So if I hit the space bar right now, it's playing black and there's no there's no audio and there's no video. Yeah. So sometimes uh, you're at a movie and something like huge happens. Boom! And you want a black screen and total silence. That's how they do it. You just you put nothing there, and then it's forced to play nothing. So there's no audio, and there's no video. So do you have to have a scene there, and then like get rid of it, or, or do the lift, or can you like do it without doing uh, We call either putting in a slug, you can put in, a, it's called a slug, um, or you can put in uh, a dummy clip and then lift it out. Yeah. Yep. Avid, Avid forces you to put in a clip and lift it out. Yep. It's different than in Final yeah. Cut. Yeah. There's a few there's a few differences between Final Cut and Avid and that's that's one of them. Okay. So we're going to let's get rid of we're just gonna get rid of this section right here. Push mark in and push mark out. Anything in blue that's highlighted. I can extract it, I can lift it. In this case, I'm going to extract, delete it, and we'll just get the rest of the rest of this stuff too. Find the beginning of, or find the end of this shot here. This is also called a jump cut, if you see it between these two. When you point the camera in the same direction, and you have your camera rolling, and then all of a sudden it jumps to the same exact scene, that's called a jump cut. And we always try to avoid a jump cut when it goes from that to that. It's very jarring to the brain. It's jarring to my brain. Um, I should also point out too, if you look right here on this little clip right here, this is the beginning of this next shot. This little L right here represents, this is the beginning of this shot right here. If I go backward one frame, this little L right here, that's the ending of that shot right there. Okay? So sometimes students will try to get rid of a certain scene and they'll go like right there and put their mark in. They won't actually zoom in. Like they'll, they'll just kind of, they'll kind of just guesstimate like, uh, right there, that looks... That looks pretty close enough. That's the beginning of that shot. You have to get exact. Okay, so you have to zoom in and you have to put it right on that edit point. This little black line right here, that's your edit point. That's where the next shot starts. Okay, so if you just leave a couple frames, I'll just do that on purpose. Just to show you that it's very annoying when you have leftover shots. You have to get on that little spot. So we're going we're gonna to lay down a couple edits here. I'm going to get rid of the rest of the shots here. Mark in, mark out, and I'm going to hit extract. Bless you. I'm going to go get the next shot. Scene one, take one. We already got that one. Okay, so it, the Avid will always remember the in and outs on all of your shots that you lay in. Okay, so we've got roll nine, scene two, take one. Roll nine, scene two, take one. Five, four, three. <coughs> Why did I shoot this shot? So it's a different angle. So it's a different angle. 
Can you get 25 shots on the highway? Yeah, you can. You can get it close up, you can get it wide, you can get it tight, you can film the steering wheel, you can film the hands on the steering wheel. It was just another shot for me to get. If we would have had more time and if I would have had more than 10 minutes on this, I would have went, I would have went on the side of, of them and filmed their feet up close. I would have probably went in front and filmed the feet coming, coming closer. Because this whole entire shot right here, this is, a, this is an incredibly boring shot. It's like two people walking towards the camera. Who cares? It's, that's, that's a boring shot. You gotta dress it up. The only way to dress it up is to get more shots. Put the camera right here and walk next to Keon or walk next to McKenna or walk in front of them, put, put the camera right, right in front of their feet and walk towards them or do an over the shoulder and walk behind them but make sure that you're not filming the window that is on the other side of the, the hallway. So a lot of little things that you, we could do to dress this shot up. Questions so far? All right, we're gonna lay down a couple edits here. I'm gonna leave that little jump cut there. All right, actually, you know what? I'm going to find a little spot to cut this little interesting shot in. Anybody see the continuity error, which I'm seeing right now? They're about the same. What? Nope. Well. Okay. Look at look at how far apart they are here, and now look at this shot right here. That's called a break in continuity. Okay. So, I'm I'm glad that you guys went on the same side because that would have been an off awful, awful edit. And you see a lot of those edits in Hollywood, in Hollywood movies, like blatantly obvious errors where the girls on the, all of a sudden, they, from this wide shot, this extreme wide shot, and then they cut to this shot, and then the girls on the, the left side instead of the right side. So little things like that drive me crazy inside movies. Especially when directors get paid a lot of money for doing what they do. All right. We're going to lay down an edit. We're going to lay down this shot over the top of this one. We're going to we're going to match Mc, I'm going to look at McKenna's feet here. She just steps with her right. Okay, this is where these little buttons come in come in handy. Frame, her right foot goes down. Right foot is completely down. Then I'm going to go over here. Right foot is down. Look at her left foot. Her left foot is kind of in motion, not quite. And it's awesome when the other person's foot matches almost exactly. Like Keon's foot is up higher and it's lower here. So if I go backwards here, I gotta bring his foot down a little bit right there. Now it's almost a perfect match. Look at her foot here and look at her foot here. Keon's foot is up. He's walking with his right foot. It's almost an identical match here. Uh, arms, McKenna's arm, that one's forward, that one's forward. Her arm is down, her arm is down. Pockets, pockets, pocket, pocket. This is like a perfect match. So we're gonna hit mark in right here, and we're gonna push mark in right here. I'm going to put this shot, this timeline is going to play, 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 and when it gets to this edit point, mark in, it's going to cut to this shot. I just gotta figure out. I'm gonna have them walk past the camera. So foot goes, McKenna's foot, foot. Clear the foot right there and mark out. Okay. Now, now I can demonstrate what uh, splice in and overwrite really, what really means. <coughs> We have our mark in down on our timeline. This is where our movie is being built or being constructed. We have our next shot queued up to go down into our timeline. And all of this footage right here, we're either, we're either gonna keep it or we're not going to keep it. I wanna show you what happens when we push it, when we push splice in, okay? What splice in will do is it will, push, it will save everything 
past your edit point. So when we lay down our edit, I'll go through it, just scrub through it. We cut to the perfect match. They walk past the camera. And then all of a sudden, they, they do the Marty McFly, and they jump back in time, and now they're back to where they were before. And when we did the edit point, this is where it should have cut. Okay, so I'm going to explain that one more time. This is the first shot. We cut to the next one, perfect match. They walk past the camera. They're about to go in the room, and now it jumps you back. This was a, this was a splice in. Splice in will keep the footage that you're putting in. Okay, so it won't get rid of anything. I'm going to go up to Edit Undo. Is there anybody that doesn't understand that, that edit that we just made? Jordan? Oh, okay. So when you hit splice in, this footage right here is, going, is not going to be erased. It's going to be basically, everybody watch my hand here. It's basically going to be pushed down. It's still going to be here. Here's that footage. Okay. So when you splice in, it's not going to like, it's not going to get rid of it. It's going to like, just slap it down. It's just going to keep pushing it down, okay? Whereas overwrite, I'm going to push overwrite next. What overwrite is going to do is just like, it's just going to get rid of all that footage that's coming up after that. So watch. Okay, so we've got our edit point, and we've got, sorry, we've got overwrite. So what just happened was we got our first shot. We cut to the perfect match. They walk past the camera. And since we, we told this shot how long we wanted it to be, we wanted McKenna to walk past the camera, get her foot out of there. That's where the shot ends because you see those little alligator teeth. Okay, so once, once it's fulfilled that shot, then it's going to cut back to the original shot because we didn't get rid of it. So here's what that edit looks like. Okay. The audio does not match. Yep. So we can we had, we can actually. I'm glad that you pointed that out because I was gonna I was gonna show you that, but I thought ah uh, they're not they're not that advanced yet. But Bryn, I respect you. That's awesome. All right. Good observation. So we're going to do edit, undo, overwrite. Bryn, the thing that Bryn said is like. The audio doesn't match. It sounds awful, Tauchi. Fix it, right? All right, so here's how we fix it. These little handles over here, we can, we can tell Avid, okay, fix, like, put that audio, put the video shot in, but don't touch the audio. So here's how you do that. If you deselect A1 and A2, what that's going to do is tell Avid, okay, don't lay anything down over the audio. We just want to affect the video. Okay, so we've got our mark in, we've got our perfect edit right here, and if I hit overwrite, all it's going to put in is just the video right there, okay, because our soundtrack is already developed, and we're not going to touch the audio. So here's that edit with the new improved sound. Actually, the sound is just coming off of shot one. Okay, so the audio isn't isn't touched on that. Is that better, Bryn? Look, what? It doesn't like fit together. It do, it fits perfectly well, together. It does, but it just like jumps to it. Like, yep, that's called a jump. That's called a that's called a that's called an edit. A cut. Yeah, thank you. Yep. And a lot of music videos will do that unless you're like. Celine Dion and you're singing My Heart Go On and Titanic is dying, Jack is dying on the Titanic and stuff. Then you would use a dissolve. Another, here, let me show you this. This is another advanced button that I wasn't planning on showing you yet. Centered on cut, this is a dissolve. We'll put a 20 frame dissolve. Add and render. Okay. Let me show you between a cut and a dissolve. Does that look better? That looks good? Okay, but now you know what that tells the audience when you do this? Ten minutes later, they were walking past the camera on this angle. 
And ten minutes later, they were they circled around the school and they were on the they were in the same spot again. Whereas a cut, when you cut from this angle to this angle, it's like you have a camera in position one, and you have a camera down here in position two, and you have a director saying, "Okay, camera one, you're on. Stand by, camera two. Stand by, two, and take camera two. So that's what that's what's happening in live television. Camera one, you're on. Stand by, two, take two. Okay, so that's what when we're doing live television, we're saying, "Stand by, camera one, take one. Stand by, two." Take two. So when you start telling stories and doing and doing videos and movies, you want to take as many angles to help tell that story. If this is a commercial about shoes, I mean you'd be on your way of, of telling a good story about shoes because right now that angle is all about the shoes. Right? Okay. Alright, moving on. We're gonna keep building our little movie here. Okay, so now you, as, a, as an editor, you have a decision to make. A really, really big decision. When McKenna's foot clears this shot, we could do an assumption cut. What is an assumption cut? The audience can assume they got to where they were going. So we can either, we can either decide to cut back to this shot and finish it out, or when when McKenna clears this shot right here with her foot, we can cut to the next shot. We can just get rid of this shot right here. So that's kind of up to your group, the director, however you want to work that. If you want to compress the time, whatever. I mean, if, if, you, if you want to see them walk into that room, that's fine. But we can probably assume that they're going to get where they want to be. Do you want to leave it in for, for right now? I kind of I kind of want to do just because I want to cut to the next shot. All right, so I'm going to go to the next scene, which is scene three, take one. Uh, scene three. <coughs> nine. Scene three, take one. Five, four, three. Oh, that's right. I can't believe it's going to snow tonight. I know we've had such good weather so far. I mean, seriously, why? Do you remember what we were going to do with this? No. Going to snow tonight. I can't believe. We'll make it. Yeah, you know what? We'll come back and do that. I'm not, I want to keep with the video. I'm going to name this audio voice over. Audio voice over. We're coming back to that one. Keep you guys in suspense. What's he going to do with that? He's filming the floor. Man, he's an awful... Roll nine. Scene three, take two. Five. We do that twice? Four. Oh, this... Okay. Remember? Three. Can't believe it's gonna snow tonight. I know, seriously. I mean. Oh, I had you guys move closer together, so I'm gonna put closer to uh, audio, audio voice over closer. All right, I need six four. First. Well, nine. Scene four. Take one. Five, four, three. All right, here's where they enter. Oh, there was too much headroom, too. Yes, there is. Thank you. There it is. So we'll name this bad take. Bad take. Six five students walk into room. Double click. Five, four, three, two. All right, you have another decision to make as an editor. When McKenna turns that corner right here, we're trying to do a match frame here where the camera sees her right there, the door. If you look at the door right here, her foot, her foot is equal with the door. Right there. The run hand is forward. Mark in. That's where the next shot starts. And we'll put it right there. I'm going to turn my audio back on. And I'm going to hit overwrite. 
When I hit overwrite, it gets rid of everything after that point. Let me show you that one more time. Here's my edit point. I've got all this junk right here. If I were to hit splice in, it's going to keep all that stuff. Okay? So in this case, you know what? I'll just keep it there. Is that edit believable? Okay, they go into the door. Roll nine, scene five, take one. Five, four, three. Five, four, three. All right, we gotta find where she grabs the door handle. Okay, right hand goes forward, and we don't have a shot of the door handle. So, as an editor, you can decide on if you want to cut when the hand is there. It kind of depends on how the arm is coming into that shot. It's coming in kind of, it's coming in high, but down here it's coming in low. All right, we'll finish up this tomorrow.